solving quadratic inequalities. Before you start with solving quadratic inequalities, I strongly suggest that you first go and um, make sure you are comfortable and you know exactly what's going on with solving quadratic equalities um, or e quadratic equations, which is the ones in the previous two videos. Um, it's almost, I think, an hour's worth of um, of video footage that discusses quadratic equations in length and just make sure you know exactly how that works before you try doing inequalities if you're comfortable with that the inequalities is just a little step further that you, that you have to do if you're not comfortable with quadratic um, equations the inequalities will be a whole mess to start from the beginning um, so see that you know how to do that um, if you know how the quadratic equations work and how to solve them, there's really only two things that you need to be able to do extra for the inequalities. And the first one is if you multiply or divide um, by a negative number, same as with the linear um, inequalities, the sign changes. Um, that means that, as if you remember with the, the linear inequalities, if I multiply or divide by negative 1 um, or negative 2 or negative 3, then the smaller than becomes bigger than, or if I multiply um, a bigger than or equal to becomes a smaller than. So that's the first thing. The second thing that comes with now is... I'm still going to follow the same procedure than for quadratic equations. Everything to one side, zero on the other, factorize. But now the zero factor law, that part changes a little bit. And this is how. So I've now found my factors. And I've got an inequality either bigger than, smaller than, equal to zero. Um, now the zero factor law that I used to use with the equalities with the equations is now not going to become my solution but that is going to be my reference points or my zero points that I'm going to evaluate further a little bit so if I have for instance x minus 3 times x plus 2 that I've now found um, smaller or equal to zero then my zero points will be um, x equal to 3 or x equal to minus 2 um, and then I'm going to work from there. Now, if you are a graphic person, if you understand graphs and pictures quite good, one method you can use is by knowing that this quadratic equation is a parabola and understanding that if the x squared in the equation was positive, then the parabola will look like this. And if the x squared was negative, the parabola will look like that. So this is a positive parabola like that. And then the zero points is actually negative 2 and 3 is my, um, my x-intercepts. So if I go and draw the graph through this, can you see that we're smaller or equal to 0? So if I had that product... Um, I'm just going to do this for the product smaller or equal to zero then I need everything underneath the line which is this part of the parabola can you see and that lies between minus two and three can you see for all the x values between minus two and three so then I can go say x lies between minus two and three and this will be equal to um, smaller or equal to or just smaller than depending on what the question said there so what I have there I write the same thing there if it was just a smaller than then these would both be smaller than um, and if I need it say for instance my product here it is smaller or equal than zero but say for instance they asked where this is bigger or equal to and I ended up with my product bigger than zero and this is my zero points 
then bigger than zero would be that part above the line which is can you see all the values before negative 2x which is smaller than equal to negative 2 so on the x-axis smaller than 2 can you see this my x values all smaller than 2 and also it's positive 4 and um, bigger than 3 so then I have two sets which is bigger or equal than 3 um, now this is the more visual method depending on your um, your type of understanding and your type of learning if you're a visual person this is what you would, would go and do to analyze the values for smaller than or bigger than um, just remember to draw the parabola the correct way around for positive quadratic functions it looks like this and for negative it will go the other way um, so that's a visual interpretation um, a more analytical interpretation is if you found your zero points on uh, the number lines I'm going to draw for each of these a number line so where x minus 3 for that equation and for x plus 2 for x minus 3 at 3 this is 0 Ach. at 3 this equation is 0 right if I substitute 3 into this equation I will get 0 and if I substitute negative 2 into this equation I will get 0 so there is 0 points and I'm just going to put both these points on both graphs like that but my, you can see my 0 points are specifically there and there and then you can go and test for yourself a few but this will always work like this um, if I take any value smaller than where my zero point lies, so say for instance I substitute 2 or 1 or 0 or negative 1 or minus 2 or uh, minus 3, any of these values into this equation, I will get values smaller than 0, which is negative number. And if I substitute bigger than number, so if I substitute 4, or 5 or 6 into this equation can you see 4 minus 3 5 minus 3 6 minus 3 all gives me values um, positive values which are values bigger than 0 so this will always work like this um, but you can test um, for the first few times to just make sure um, you're doing the right thing until you know that you're doing the right thing but this will always work like this um, so there's my zero point and then before the zero point if I um, put into any of these numbers into this equation I get negative numbers which is smaller than zero so negative numbers and if I put in any values here on the number line I will get a positive answer and for this equation there's my zero point if I put in numbers to this side of the zero point I will get into this equation I will get negative answers so for instance I take minus 3 minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1 so negative answers you can test a few and if I take numbers bigger than minus 2 say for instance minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 is 1 um, or I take 0 0 plus 2 is 2, 3 plus 2 is 5, 4 plus 2, 5 plus 2, 6 plus 2, all positive numbers. So can you see that um, just on like on a number line where I have 0, this side I will have the positives and this side I will have the negatives. Um, the same thing happens if I find the 0 point of an equation, a linear equation. Um, to this side I will have negative numbers and to that side I will have positive numbers same for this to this side I will have negative numbers and to this side I will have positive numbers just remember that the moment you have a negative x in your equation here this will swap around because you remember on a number line um, as the positive numbers goes bigger they go to this side as the negative numbers go bigger the numbers themselves they actually get smaller because on a number line this is bigger this is smaller so if I have a negative x I'm actually going to make the value smaller as I make the number bigger and I'm going to make the value bigger by making the number smaller so then this will just swap around 
um, but for most for the most part you will have positive x values um, with your negatives on that side you're positive on that side and there's this zero value so negative to that side positive to that side and then I'm going to use after I filled in this little table I'm going to use negative times negative negative times positive because can you see these two equations are multiplied with one another and that must give me a smaller than zero number which means a negative or if I have bigger than it must give me a bigger than zero number which means positive so I know that when I multiply these two equations they must give me a negative number and I'm, I can test that for specific areas because I know a negative times a negative is a positive a negative times a positive is a negative and a positive times a positive is positive and here this will be a negative 2 but negative times 0 on the point minus 2 I will have a 0 and on the point 3 0 times anything but this will be a positive 3 value but 0 times 3 will give me positive so if I substitute values smaller than negative 2 into these two equations so say for instance negative 3 can you see negative 3 um, minus 3 gives me minus 6 and negative 3 plus 2 gives me minus 1 then I have minus 6 times minus 1 which gives me positive 6 and I'm looking for numbers smaller than 6 but all of the numbers that I fill in if I fill the same number in there and there on this side of minus 2 I'm going to get positive values between minus 2 and 3 I'm going to get negative values and of the 3, so 4 and 5 and 6, if I substitute that in, if I multiply them, will give me again positive numbers. Um, so then I'm going to, um, to just write down my set. I've now worked out where um, I have positive, negative, zero values specifically. Um, and then... I want to know where it's equal to zero that little line equal to zero is specifically on negative two and three and also where it's smaller than zero so negative so this is the set of numbers that I want to define and I can then easily see x must be between negative two and three and negative two must be included in the set because that's my zero and three must also be included in the set because that's a zero value and I'm looking for zero included if I didn't have zero included then I would also not include negative two and three because those are my zero points but then this is how I do this so I'm just going to quickly revise the table what I do is after I find my zero points um, at 3 and minus 2 I go and draw a number line separately where I go and um, show the zero point for x minus 3 the first bracket and I show the zero point for x plus 2 and then everything to the to the left of the zero will be negative and everything to the um, right of the zero will be positive except for when you have a negative x then it just swaps around then you have positives on that side and negatives on that side but usually everything to this side will be negative everything to that side will be positive and what you want to do is you just go and multiply the negative the signs you multiply the sign with the sign it gives me that the sign with the sign gives me that and then when I have the signs, I can go and just compare with what they asked. So if they asked smaller than zero, then I now want negative numbers. And this is the um, set that I'm going to give as my answer then. If they want bigger than zero, then that would be positive answers. So then I have two separate sets, all the numbers smaller than minus two and all the numbers bigger than three. Um, so that is the that is just the last bit that comes with now if you're doing a quadratic inequality the rest of the procedure will stay the same and this gets add on um, but i'm going to do a few examples to quickly show you um, how that works and where that fits in exactly and it might be worth to just specify this will be valid for all um, real numbers or 
this is now set builder notation can you see or you can use this method um, include excluding minus two and three or excluding uh, including minus two and three or round brackets for excluding this is interval notation or you can use set builder notation but if you use set builder notation it might be worth just specifying that x is real numbers um, all right so let's look at a few examples now right so i have um, x squared minus 4 is smaller or equal to 5 this is now an easy example and i'll make it more difficult as we go along um, now this is a quadratic equation or inequality and the procedure for quadratic is I take everything to one side so I take the 5 over 0 on the other side and then I can simplify this you see I treat it exactly as an equation I just write instead of equal that that sign whatever they gave me to work with and then I factorize to x minus 3 x plus 3 and then my critical points or my reference points or my zero points um, I know some teachers call them different things but zero points, critical points, um, reference points all of those are fine x is equal to 3 or x is equal to minus 3 and um, these are my critical points or my zero points so now I'm going to put these on two number lines 4x minus 3 um, I have two points minus 3 and 3 for x minus 3 this is 0 where x is 3 and I make my 0 there and the other equation so I make a second number line is x plus 3 and this is 0 where x is minus 3 now for this equation there is 0 so everything smaller will be negative and everything bigger will be positive and there is my 0 this side will be negative and to this side will be positive positive there is my 0 points because anything times 0 is 0 so there is my two 0 points and then I multiply so negative times negative is positive negative times positive is negative positive times positive is positive and i'm looking spe specifically here for smaller than or equal to zero number so that is um negative number so my set here will be x can you see negative numbers and equal to zero number so my set goes from minus three to three and I include the minus 3 and 3 because those are my 0 points and I also want the 0 points and this is for x an element of the real number system this is set builder notation or you can write it in um, interval notation and just make block brackets to include um, that and then I will just write x is an element of that set okay um so there is a first example let's look at another example maybe um the key for most mathematics is practice i know um most people think you only need to practice for maths that's not true you also need to know the stuff you need to know but once you know the stuff um, you know the rules you know the formulas um then all you need to do is just practice 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 until you you get the hang of how to apply the formulas how to apply the theory um, what's all of the di different types of things they can ask you um, so practice this is a quadratic equation so I'm going to take everything to one side and you will recognize this problem maybe from the um, quadratic um, equations video I used the same questions here and in the other video so that you can see it's pretty much the same it's just what and you can compare and see what changes um, so I can take out 3x as a common factor leaving me with 2 minus x bigger than 0 and now my 0 points or my 
critical points. Lies where x is 0. Um, 3 is not going to be 0 if you remember. Or where x is 2. Um, so 2 minus 2 gives me 0 also. And then I'm going to put this on a number line for 3x or for x. Doesn't really matter. Um, and for 2 minus x. My points are 0 and 2. I always write the smaller one first, like they would appear on a number line, um, because otherwise you might get it wrong. So 3x is 0, or x is 0, there at 0, and 2 minus x is 0 at 2. And then the side, the left side of the 0 points is negative, the right side of the 0 points is positive, and I can multiply negative times negative is positive. This is zero, this is negative, this is zero, and this is positive. And you will see this pattern stays the same for most of the questions. And um, you can get something else like minus plus minus, but for most of the questions it will stay like this. Um, you're going to get something else when you have a negative x squared. And I actually have a negative x squared. Now why didn't it change then? Um, oh, 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 you remember when I said linear equations when your x is negative then this changes around. So then... Uh, this side of the zero must be positive and that side must be negative. Um, ah, and then can you see, because I have a negative x squared, so the parabola is, ah, oh, yes, okay. So this is negative zero, positive, negative, and can you see the pattern changed? Now I want where x is bigger than zero and what happens is, um, my x values is positive there, so my x lies between 0 and 2. These are not included because I don't want equal to 0 also. Um, and that's where my graph is positive. Okay, so let's look at another example. Um, say for instance I have now x minus 6 plus 2 over x smaller than 0 where x is not equal to 0. What would happen? I multiply throughout with an x. Same as I would with an equation. You remember now this x not equal to 0 just means that this it just makes sure that this equation is not invalid first of all and second of all when I get my answer at the bottom I must just make sure that x is not equal to zero because that's not mm, that's not a valid answer so I have this um, I can't factorize this I'm going to find my zero points by using the formula um, so my zero points will be minus b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a and I'm going to get two x values. Um, I'm so I'm going to immediately fall into the into the calculator the equation with the correct substitutions. Um, just so you can see. If you have this written in front of you, that should be good. My x value is 1, my b value is minus 6, and my c value is 2. So I'm going to do this. Um, I first put in, in the Casio, I first put in the, the um, fraction, and then I have minus minus 6. First plus the root of b squared minus 6 squared minus 4 and then a is 1 and c is 2 
over 2 and A is 1. Alright, can you see? And then I fill in all of that and now I'm just going to press equal. I don't want to write this as my answer. I'm going to press the decimal form button and I have 5.6 round off to 5 because that's bigger than um, 5 or bigger. So this 4 is going to become 5. 5.65 um, So I write there my first answer 5.65 and then for the second answer I'm just going to go use my arrow key change that plus to a minus and I don't want this I'm going to press the S to D button and I have 0 0.35 so I'm going to add that in um, 0 0.35 and luckily very good I don't have a x value x but also when I write my set I must not include the zero point so I'm just going to watch out for that look out for that also so I'm going to evaluate now I don't have equations to write here but I can just write the two x values this one is smaller so I'm going to write 0 0.35 5.65 um, and then this is um, the, the one zero point will be at this one doesn't really matter which one you choose and then the other zero point will be at the other one so just make on the two lines um, each one a zero point and then that side will be negative positive positive negative negative positive this is positive zero negative positive positive and now I want the value smaller than zero specifically. So I'm not including zero. And can you see that the place where x is equal to zero will lie there? Um, just make a note for yourself that x cannot be zero. But since the area that I'm working with lies here, I'm not. this is not a risk. If this line lies in my area, I'm going to specify the area as usual. I'm going to say x. I'm going to write in interval notation. x is an element of excluded 0 0.35, 5.65. And um, if this line lied in my interval, then I would write my interval and just state, but x cannot be whatever lies in the interval that shouldn't be there um, but since that's not a problem the x0 is outside of the area that I'm working with um, it's not a problem and I'm done